Good afternoon. Thank you for coming this lunch on seminar. I'm Eri Harada from Ajinomoto. Before the start of this lunch on seminar, let me introduce our products and services, STEMFIT, a little. First of all, do you know our company, Ajinomoto? As some of you may know, the history of the Ajinomoto group began with an umami seasoning called Ajinomoto, which is consisted by amino acid, and the group has made effort in amino acid-oriented R&D. Yes, Ajinomoto is well known as a food company, but in fact, it is also an amino acid company and has developed various amino science business such as pharmaceutical amino acid, cosmetics, and health and nutrition materials. STEMFIT is one of them. STEMFIT is a medium for human pluripotent stem cells. We received an offer from Dr. Yamanaka, who is inventor of IPS cells, and then created of STEMFIT medium in collaboration with CIDA, Center for IPS Cell Research and Application at Kyoto University. We had technologies on amino acid nutrition research, powder technology nutrient development, and analytical techniques, and biotechnology. While Dr. Yamanaka led research team, and they were not satisfied with commercial media quality or performance, and they needed single cell passage support and the development of a robust SOP. Also, PMDA required clinical grade animal free medium. So we created STEMFIT. We at Nomoto have three strengths in the cell and gene therapy field. The first is the ability to develop high performance media the second is regulatory compliance, and the third is low material management. These three factors enable us to deliver products that combine high performance, clinical availability, and stable supply. This slide shows STEMFIT Media, AK03N, Basic O3 and Basic O4 complete types are for human PFC expansion. STEMFIT for differentiation is a supplement for human PFC differentiation, and STEMFIT for mesenchymal stem cells is for MSC expansion. All of these media are designed based on the strengths mentioned before and can be used for clinical cell manufacturing. Human PFC media uh, features are AOF, frequent free feeding, and single cell expansion. And there is also one bottle type product such as basic O4 and stem fit for MSC. In addition to the medium, stem fit has recombinant protein product, stem fit purotein. As you know, the differentiation of human PFC needs many growth factors or cytokines according to the organs and cells you want to make. The product features are affordable price, animal origin free, regulatory compliance, and ready to use form. We are currently expanding our lineup, so please contact us if you have any requests. This picture shows examples of regenerative medicine using stem feet. When using IPS cells, first you expand the amount of IPS C and differentiate it into the cells of the target organ. Then cells are transplanted for treatment. You can use these stem fit media for HPFC establish and expansion, and then for differentiation period, 
You can use stem feet for differentiation as differentiation supplements and stem feet proteins as written here. In cell manufacturing using human PSD, three points are important, shape, quality, and cost. There are many advantages using stem feet in the manufacturing of human pluripotent stem cell based products, such as animal origin free and single cell culture for safety, the genetic stability and metabolic approach for quality. Since I don't have much time to explain all of this today, for more information, please check our website. And one of our unique advantages is metabolic approach. In this seminar, Dr. Shiraki and Dr. Toyama are going to give lectures related to metabolic approach. So please look forward to them. The last topic I will introduce is our service tip about custom media manufacturing. Ajinomoto Kojin Bio is a factory specialized in clinical grade media and buffer production for cell and gene therapy. We offer contract manufacturing services for liquid media and buffers under strict quality control. We can handle manufacturing on various scales, so please contact us if you are interested. This is a summary. Stem fit helps you to overcome the challenges with human PSD based product manufacturing. If you have any questions, please contact us from the QR code on the handout you have. Thank you for listening. Then luncheon seminar one will be starting shortly. Please wait a moment until you start. Uh, so uh, let's begin the uh, luncheon lecture. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for uh, attending uh, this luncheon seminar of the CVBE uh, 2023. <coughs> uh, this luncheon seminar uh, is uh, produced by Ajinomoto Company. Uh, today, uh, I invited two speakers. And the title of this luncheon seminar is uh, uh, Innovative Metabolism Research in Regenerative Medicine and Cell Therapy. I will introduce the first speaker. The first speaker is uh, Nobuaki Shiraki uh, in the School of uh, Life Science and Technology, Tokyo uh, Institute of Technology. So uh, his title uh, of this talk is uh, uh, Methionine and Zinc, Key Regulators of Pluripotent Stem Cell Fate. So Dr. Shiraki, please. Hi, uh, Fukuda-sensei, thank you for kind introduction. I'm Novak Shiraki from uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology. Uh, today, I'd like to uh, talk about the role of methionine and zinc on pluripotency. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, organizer and also Ajinomoto to uh, give me this opportunity. Uh, you know, pluripotent stem cell uh, differentiate variety of cell line, cell, uh, cell ectoderm and mesoderm. Cardiomyocytes is mesoderm derived cells. And my interest is endoderm, uh, spe uh, particularly pancreas and liver and intestine. We uh, carried out this uh, endoderm differentiation for about 20 years. So for efficient cell differentiation, these three component is important, cells and biomaterial and scaffold and also regulatory signals. Among them are uh, recent uh, years, we focusing on basal medium. Basal medium containing a nutrient such as amino acid, glucose, vitamin, and trace element. So today, in my talk, 
I'd like to uh, talk about recent uh, our progress that uh, the relationship of methionine and zinc. And methionine and zinc uh, interact each other to maintain pluripotency. First, methionine. Uh, we reported that a lot of methionine on pluripotency in uh, 2004, about nine years ago. First, we uh, found that undifferentiated cells require the methionine compared to undefinitive band of undifferentiated cells. So uh, undifferentiated cells uh, methionine cycle rapidly work. So we, if we deploy the methionine from the culture medium, the pluripotent stem cell turn into a poised state, easy to differentiate state. But if the long term, two days methionine deprivation induce cell death in pluripotent stem cell. So by using several slides, I'd like to explain about the role of methionine. First, uh, long term methionine deprivation. As I mentioned, 48 hour methionine deprivation induced cell death, specifically in undifferentiated cells. So during endodome differentiation, that mix condition, uh, endodome cells and octo for uh, undifferentiated cells exist for a period of differentiation time. So my question is, what will happen with the mixed condition after methionine deprivation. So then I culture these uh, condition 48 hour amino acid deprivation. This is a result. Each amino acid deprivation, this is SOC17 endodome cells and OCT4 undifferentiated cells. As you can see, this methionine deprivation significantly reduced in OCT4 positive cells, not in SOC17. So this photo is uh, implicit data. Methionine deprivation eliminate undifferentiated cells, green cells. So it means it's just one essential amino acid methionine deprivation eliminate undifferentiated cells during differentiation. So we can eliminate undifferentiated cells using that culture medium. So by using this, we can efficiently differentiate into uh, endodome tissue, pancreas, liver, and the intestine. So next, short-term, five-hour deprivation. As I mentioned, this short-term methionine deprivation stopped cell proliferation and changed uh, pluripotent state to poised differentiation state. So this is methionine cycle. Methionine converts to s adenosyl methionine, SAM then SH and homocysteine. If we deprive the methionine from the culture medium, intracellular S adenosine methionine concentration significantly downregulate. Then, you know, SAM, S adenosine methionine, uh, used as a methyl source for our uh, DNA mes uh, methylation reaction, like a DNA methylation and histone methylation. So we checked uh, H3K4 line methylation level as my expectation. Methionine deprivation, just five hour methionine deprivation decrease HCK4 trine methylation level. So, uh, chip sequence are carried out to clarify the, uh, what happened. So, this is undifferentiated uh, pluripotent gene and endodome uh, genes. In the case of pluripotent gene, if we deprive the methionine, the uh, HCK4 trine methylation mark uh, decreased. So, then the gene expression, NANOG, or uh, POU5A1, undifferentiated related gene, downregulate. Then, easy to differentiate. In the case of uh, endodome gene, uh, after differentiation, in the, in the control condition, that gene are uh, bivalent state. But if we deploy methionine before differentiation, that uh, HPK27 methylation easy to decrease, so then, monopotent. So uh, this is molecular mechanism of methionine deprivation. Uh, pre-treatment increased uh, cell differentiation. So as I mentioned, just five hour methionine deprivation changes cell fate, pluripotent state to poised state. So when we perform 
ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm differentiation. This is the result. So in the ectoderm, PAC6 uh, gene expression upregulate under methanin deprived co condition, and also luckily key, a positive cell number increased, and also SOC17 endoderm marker gene positive cell percentage, the red one, uh, methanin deprivation group are uh, upregulated. It means just this methanin deprivation pretreatment increased three germ layer differentiation. So methanin contributed to pluripotency through, as I mentioned, epigenetic regulation like a H3K4 trimethylation, but other mechanism remained unclear. So we perform microarray analysis. So the, when we pick up this uh, eight gene, that this eight gene are uh, specifically upregulated methanin deprived group. So we pick, we focusing on this SLC30A1 zinc transporter. Zinc transporter located here, as a name is Z21. Z21 sec, uh, secreted zinc from uh, the cell to outside. Interestingly, this SLC30A1 upregulation occur only in undifferentiated cells. There are no change in the definitive endoderm. So, next step is we check about intracellular trace element concentration. Just culture, five hour, each amino acid deprived culture medium, we then to check zinc, copper, iron, so as you can see, this blue is control and green is as amino acid deprivation, red is methanin deprivation. Methanin deprivation selectively reduced protein bound zinc concentration. No change, uh, free zinc and also copper and iron. So then we check that what, uh, uh, what happened. So as we have already uh, reported that in the methanin deprivation inhibit homocysteine excretion. In the control condition, homocysteine uh, passively circulated from the cells. But in the methanin deprived condition, homocysteine secretion completely uh, inhibit. So then uh, we're focusing on homocysteine. Then this one interesting paper published, uh, zinc bind to protein using this sulfur uh, in the sulfur hydro group, SH group of cysteine. Interestingly, homocysteine also have SH group. So then replace zinc to uh, here like this. So then homocysteine increased free zinc. So then we add homocysteine in the culture, uh, in the cell lysis. Lysate. So as you can see, this blue one is zinc, uh, zinc concentration. Gray uh, iron and orange is copper. As you can see, homocysteine dose dependently reduced intracellular uh, protein bind zinc concentration. So this is just sort of summary of methionine reaction. Methionine deprivation reduced intracellular zinc concentration using homocysteine, like this. Next step is zinc. Zinc is essential trace element, worked as an important law in our body. And zinc deficiency lead to taste disorder and dermatitis and the impaired development. And also around 10% of all protein encoded in human genome have a zinc binding motif. And zinc play a role in the uh, protein stabilization and also uh, enzyme activation. That enzyme containing DNA, RNA, poly polymerase, and also methionine synthase is also a uh, zinc required uh, enzyme. Then I have this thought about whether the culture medium we usually use for maintenance or differentiation containing zinc or not, and what is the concentration of zinc in our culture medium. This is undifferentiated uh, culture medium. The left one is component of undi undifferentiated pluripotent stem uh, maintenance medium. 
and also zinc concentration of basal medium. So interestingly, DMEMF12 containing a high zinc is always used in maintenance culture of pluripotent stem cell. Next, differentiation. As I mentioned, my interest is endodome differentiation. In the pancreatic differentiation to a recipe is here. We never use DMEMF12 for differentiation. Not only pancreas, but also a hepatic and intestinal differentiation, we don't use DMEMF12. I'm not familiar for uh, ectoderm or mesoderm differentiation. I believe that uh, DMMF2 less used in that as a differentiation culture medium. So then I think zinc is related to pluripotency. So then I think we usually use zinc-free culture medium or low zinc culture medium for differentiation. So then next to check the role of zinc using zinc deprived culture medium. This is the result. I, you, uh, I cultured three days using this culture medium. The intracellular zinc concentration down regulate. And also cell number, cell proliferation, those dependently increased by zinc treatment. And this is gene, gene expression. This one, fully potent related zinc. Lower one is differentiated marker zinc. As you can see, black one, nanog and POU 5F1, fully potent related zinc, down regulate and uh, zinc zero condition. In contrast, zinc zero condition, differentiation marker zinc, GATA4, uh, GATA4, SOC17, Eomethodamine, PAC6, PCAM, upregulate. And also, finally, we check about uh, enzyme activity. Alkali phosphatase is a, a very famous marker enzyme for pluripotency. LP is also zinc required enzyme. In that case, zinc zero condition, LP activation is completely inhibited. And also, uh, this LP uh, regulate ATP catabolism in the outside. So we check the uh, extracellular uh, ATP concentration, zinc zero condition, LP activity completely inhibit, then in the in then ATP concentration up regulate. So it means zinc deprivation triggers post differentiation of pluripotent stem cell. This is undifferentiated state. So next differentiation state. I use this zinc deprived culture medium for ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm differentiation. Interestingly, this uh, differentiation state, zinc deprivation uh, effect on endoderm differentiation, not ectoderm or mesoderm differentiation. Finally, we apply this zinc deprived culture, uh, eight different cell line endoderm differentiation. Left one is control condition, zinc three micromolar containing culture medium. Eight cell line. This cell line easy to differentiate SOX17 positive cell, but like this one, not so good because there are uh, so many undifferentiated cell remain after differentiation. But if we use zinc zero condition, almost all cell line can easily differentiate into endoderm cells. So it means the, this culture medium reduced difference between cell line to cell line. So this short summary of zinc story. Uh, for time limitation, we, uh, I could not explain about uh, methionine metabolism under zinc deprived condition, but and zinc zero condition, MTR, this is uh, methionine synthesis, uh, zinc, re zinc required enzyme inhibit activity, and also DNMT3B is uh, uh, methionine cycles gene uh, down regulate. So by using this, zinc itself regulate methionine metabolism. So finally, I applied uh, this 
zinc deprived culture condition and methane deprived condition into pancreatic differentiation. First, five hour methane deprivation. Next step is zinc deprivation five days. So then further pancreatic progenitor and pancreatic beta cell differentiation. This is the result. Day 13, we check about insulin circulation. This iPS beta cell and the human islet. As you can see, this uh, iPS beta cell circulated insulin depend on glucose. So uh, using this specific culture medium, we can generate a mature iPS beta cell. Uh, this is summary slide. Uh, in the pluripotent stem cell, methionine, essential amino acid, and essential trace element, zinc, interact each other to maintain pluripotency and methionine regulate homocysteine uh, secretion then methionine uh, zinc concentration. And zinc itself regulate uh, enzyme activity to the methionine metabolism. So uh, finally, I acknowledge uh, the all people, the uh, collaborator. And finally, uh, methionine and zinc cul the deprived culture medium uh, developed in collaboration with Ajinomoto. I would like to say thanks. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Shiraki, for beautiful presentations. So, uh, great talk. Uh, my understanding is that <coughs> there is no zinc in the media because it comes from serum that is added to the media. But in addition to that, my understanding is that insulin that you add to the media contains enough zinc to at least supplement uh, growth for a few days. So did you add insulin to the, to the media? Yeah, good quick, quick question. Insulin containing zinc for right. uh, protein stabilization. So in that case, I use IGF-1 okay. for uh, the replacement uh, uh, insulin or zinc-free insulin, apidroenzin. Okay. Yeah. And then my next question is that uh -huh. uh, you mentioned that uh, in uh, methionine-free media, the zinc transported was reduced, right? Uh, ZNT, yeah. Upregulate. It's upregulate, uh -huh. sorry. But the uh, protein-free zinc wasn't changed, but the pro uh, zinc that is bound to the protein is changed. So to me, that means there is a defect or there is a change in uh, protein binding of zinc, not a, a change in total zinc within the cell. So how do you explain that? Yeah, so that, that is a good question also. Uh, I also check free zinc, but uh, it's a difficult to chain, uh, check the difference because maybe I think the homeostasis is rapidly changed. So then just I, just I uh, could check, uh, I could find out the difference of in, uh, interest, uh, intracellular protein bind zinc, I think. Okay, all right, thanks. Uh, other questions and comment? Okay, thank you very much for a nice presentation. So let's uh, move on to the next speaker. Uh, next speaker is uh, Associate Professor Shugo Toyama uh, in the Department of Cardiology, Keio University School of Medicine. The title of his talk is Metabolism-Based Production of Cardiomyocytes from Human uh, Pluripotent Stem Cells for regulate, uh, Regenerative Therapy. So Dr. Toyama, please. Thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Zhang and uh, Professor Fukuda and Ajinomoto Corporation uh, for giving me this opportunity. Today, I would like to talk about metabolism-based production of carmicide from human IPCs for regenerative therapy. As you know, human IPCs is uh, one of the most promising cell sources for regenerative therapy. However, it has been difficult to produce only carmicide from human IPCs as you hear. And mixed cells are uh, transplanted. Uh, tumor formation is observed uh, due to contamination of residual IPCs. Another hurdle is hundreds of million, several hundreds of millions of carmicides are required per one heart failure patient. Therefore, it is necessary to produce large number of purified carmicides to avoid tumor formation. However, there are no efficient methods to purify a large number of carmicides. So uh, to develop an ideal method for scalable production of carmicides, we focus on culture condition. In general, culture media contains a lot of nutrition for survival of various kinds of cells. 
but、uh, if we can create metabolic culture conditions where non cardiac cells cannot survive and only calm mice that can survive, it is ideal for the efficient purification for large number of calm mice. To analyze the metabolic profiles in IPSCs and calm mice,、uh, we、uh, firstly、uh, performed integrated transcriptome and metabolome analysis. And then, to further illustrate the detailed metabolic mechanism, we perform stable isotope based metabolome analysis and mitochondrial respiration analysis using flux analyzer. In essence, we demonstrated that、uh, human PSC depend on aerobic glycolysis for、uh, ATP and biomass production, including nucleotide and amino acids. So, we hypothesized glucose depleted condition will、uh, induce cell death of human PSCs due to a lack of ATP and biomass. However, interestingly,、uh, glutamine oxidation was activated to produce. ATP for the survival of human PSCs under glucose depleted conditions, as shown here. So, we developed glucose and glutamine depleted culture media, and、uh, they、uh, demonstrated they induced rapid cell death of human PSCs、uh, due to a lack of ATP and biomass. In contrast, interestingly, c a r m i c e t could survive under glucose and glutamine depleted with lactate. Supplemented conditions. Eventually, we established an inexpensive and efficient metabolic selection system for a large number of c a r m i c e t based on metabolic profiles in、uh, human IPSCs, non cardiac cells, and c a r m i c e t s In addition, most of the metabolic purified c a r m i c e t s are、uh, ventricular c a r m i c e t s、uh, that is evaluated by immunocyte chemistry and、uh, electrophysiology study. This is a video of human IPSC derived cells before metabolic selection. As you know,、uh, they consist of beating c a r m i c e t and non beating non cardiac cells, attracting positive and negative cells. And this is a time lapse video of metabolic selection for 24 hours. As you can see here,、uh, non cardiac cells、uh, died completely, and only c a r m i c e t s survived. And after exposure to glucose and glutamine depleted with lactate culture media, c a r m i c e t s continue to beat. And this is a video of human IPC derived cells after metabolic selection uh, for uh, four days. As you can see here, non c a r d i a c cells disappeared and only c a r m i c e t s survived. Next, we hypothesize、uh, metabolic selection culture conditions promote maturation because energy metabolism of、uh, human IPSCs, derived c a r m i c e t s is forced to change from the fetal glycolysis to neonatal ox oxidative phosphorylation state. As we expected,、uh, several groups reported that、uh, glucose deprivation promotes metabolic and sarcomeric maturation. These are representative papers. And、uh, it is well known that mature c a r m i c e t s utilize fatty acids for ATP generation. So it is reasonable that uh, fat, uh, fatty acid treatment or PIPA activation promote、uh, metabolic and sarcomeric maturation in human IPC derived c a r m i c e t s Next, we try to establish a method for selective elimination of residual IPSCs that can be applied in the other field. So, we focus on、uh, PSC metabolism and、uh, found that、uh, fatty acid synthesis pathway a p p e a r to be activated in human、uh, PSCs. To confirm this,、uh, we performed proteome analysis、uh, in human PSCs and Uh, IPSC derived c a r m i c e t s and found that the expression of fatty acid synthesis related enzyme,、uh, including、uh, ACLY and PASM,、uh, are the highest in human IPSCs compared to c a r m i c e t s And then, we, to elucidate the role of、uh, fatty acid synthesis, we treated the FAS inhibitor Oristat 
that is uh, known as a FDA approved anti obesity drug to uh, human uh, IPSCs and differentiated cells. So we co cultured human IPSC derived carbamycin with uh, human IPSCs, and when uh, Orisat was added to them, only uh, IPSCs uh, shown in purple were selectively removed, as shown here. Next, we induced neurons from human IPSCs using messenger RNAs. Uh, Orisat was added to them. Uh, only human PSCs were also selectively removed, and only neuron survived. To elucidate the mechanism of cell death in human PSCs by fast inhibition, uh, we performed lipidomic analysis and showed that uh, fast inhibition decreased the level of sphingolipids and glycerohospolipids, as shown here. And interestingly, ceramid supplementation could not rescue the survival of human PSCs, while uh, phosphoacylcholine supplementation rescued the survival of human IPSCs, as you hear. This is a summary of the mechanism of cell death of uh, human PSCs by fast inhibition. Under normal conditions, human PSC produce a lot of palmitic acid and phosphoacylcholine. And uh, inhibition of fasten results in a decrease in palmitic acid and phosphoacylcholine, and leading to uh, mitochondria mediated apoptosis due to a change of membrane profile. Taken together, glucose and glutamine depleted lactate condition is uh, casual media is uh, useful for purification of carbamycin, and also treatment is also useful for uh, selective elimination of residual PSCs. Next hurdle is how do we obtain a large number of carbamycin? There are two strategies, 3D culture and 2D culture. Uh, at first, we tried to develop a large-scale 3D culture system, but there are some issues, including stable, unstable differentiation and incomplete purification, because uh, non cardiac cells are often uh, located in inside the aggregate. So we eventually uh, established a large-scale 2D culture system uh, using multi-layer culture plate with active gas ventilation system. And succeeded in uh, more producing more than uh, one billion carbamycin at once uh, using this 10-layer uh, 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 plates. And based on our, our findings, uh, we established an uh, large scale or sterile carbamycin production system uh, using multi-layer culture plate and the robots. And this is a semi-automation system. And as a result, we can produce a, a large number of sterile carbamycin. Next, to produce a large number of carbamycin, it is natural to expand human species. But uh, culture, clinical grade culture media, uh, animal free and chemically defined media to expand them is extremely expensive. So we try to develop special culture media to expand human species more efficiently. So we evaluated the amino acid consumption profiles during human PSC proliferation and revealed that tube 1 was the most consumed amino acid. As you know, tryptophan is uh, known as an uh, uh, essential amino acid. And we revealed that uh, among all amino acids, only tryptophan supplementation promotes the proliferation of uh, human PSCs. This is a uh, metabolic pathway of tryptophan in uh, human PSCs. Under normal conditions, human PSC consume a lot of tryptophan. That is metabolized into kinrenin and secreted, uh, secreted from the cells. And interestingly, it is reported that uh, tryptan derived kinrenin plays a key role for maintenance of prepotency via uh, area hydrocarbon receptor signaling. So we hypothesize tryptan supplementation increases uh, kinrenin and NAD, leading to enhanced proliferation with prepotency. 
to uh, elucidate the mechanism, we measure the intra and extra extracellular metabolites in human PSCs. And uh, surprisingly, tryptan supplementation decreases uh, intra and extracellular kin renin, as shown here, and increase intra and extracellular and hormone as shown here leading to enhanced proliferation with high pluripotency. This is a summary of the mechanism for enhanced proliferation of human PSCs. Uh, Tryptan supplementation decreases uh, N-hormone kilonerin and increase, uh, uh, sorry, uh, decrease kinorenin and increase N-hormone kilonerin, NFK. And accumulated kinorenin, uh, NFK plays a key role in the enhanced proliferation of human PSCs. This is a summary of human PSC metabolism. Uh, except for our findings and uh, Dr. Shiraki's paper, uh, glutamine-derived glutathione, reduced glutathione is important for maintenance of pluripotency, via uh, stabilization of OCT4, and cytosolic uh, acetyl-CoA is also important for uh, maintenance of pluripotency, via uh, histone saturation. By the way, to produce clinical grade carmicide, it is essential to use clinical grade animal free culture media. However, uh, we didn't have suitable culture media for regenerative therapy, so we, we collaborated with Ajinomoto Corporation and developed uh, three types of uh, clinical grade culture media uh, for human IPC expansion, cardiac differentiation, and metabolic selection. It took about eight years for development of culture media, but uh, as a result, we can produce a large number of clinical grade carmicides. In transplantation system, uh, we discovered uh, cardiac spheroid transplantation greatly improved the engraftment rate compared to single cell transplantation. And uh, we also developed a large scale cardiac spheroid production system using microwave plates, as shown here. Uh, in a preclinical study, we uh, produce HA homo human uh, IPSC derived cardiac spheroids uh, using clinical grade culture conditions, as uh, mentioned before. And uh, clinical grade cardiac spheroid nicely engrafted in the monkey's heart at three months after transplantation without immune rejection when we use uh, immunosuppressants. And we also evaluated cardiac function and arisimogenesis. And doc, uh, our collaborator, Dr. Shiva, will give a talk uh, the day after tomorrow. In clinical application, recently our metabolic purified cardiac spheroids are transplanted into three patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy at Tokyo Women's uh, Medical University Hospital and other hospital. Uh, I cannot uh, mention about it in detail, uh, but we will show, show you in the near future. Uh, this is the last slide. Our metabolic purified carmicide are also utilized to generate EHT uh, for drug discovery. Uh, this is uh, Professor Eschenhagen's uh, lab te technology. And uh, in this experiment, uh, we focus on uh, various organs derived collagens. And among them, uh, heart derived collagen has unique profiles uh, that is uh, collagen uh, type 3 or uh, rich. And uh, human IBSC derived EHT with uh, heart derived collagen show mature profiles, including contraction and relaxation pattern, and uh, gene and protein expression. Uh, our, uh, my lab uh, group member, Dr. Tani, will give a talk uh, tomorrow. And last but not least, I'd like to thank all the collaborators and our lab members. Thank you for your attention. Dr. Toyama, thank you very much for a nice presentation. Uh, the uh, paper is now for, uh, open for discussion. Is there any question or comment? Oh, Eshenhage, please. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Really, uh, I think this is really important uh, work, what you are doing. 
so there is a systematically moving forward. I was wondering, uh, one of the parameters with, with large scale uh, pluripotent stem cell culture is karyotypic uh, stability. And I was wondering whether any of your interventions like in zinc or in methionine or uh, other pathways, tryptophan, what you, what you showed, whether any of those uh, had an effect on karyotypic stability because this is another issue we have to take care of. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, it's an important question. And uh, yeah, we, uh, now we are investigating uh, to uh, uh, stabilize the differentiation efficiency uh, uh, using the other technique. Uh, that is metabolic, metabolism based uh, technique. Uh, and yeah, uh, we will show you in the near future. Yeah, thank you. Other question and a comment? So, Yuji, please. Very nice talk. Uh, I have a, a quick question. Uh, so, since like a tryptophan is elevated, the, the most, uh, the one of the most like amino acid, so have you looked at like a melatonin level or like a, a circadian level is something affected the cardiac myocyte maturation? Uh, sorry, uh, it's an important question, but uh, we, we didn't uh, check it yet. And yeah, yeah, it's an uh, in interesting question. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. One more question. So basically, Yuji told us that if you inhibit uh, glucose uh, metabolite entry into the TCA cycle, there is more pro proliferation of cardiomyocytes. What you're saying now is that you need to have citrate to produce, uh, uh, to produce fatty acids inside the cell. That means the TCA cycle needs to be active. So how do you explain this discrepancy between you know, what has been shown in terms of TCA cycle inhibition, increasing proliferation, and now you're saying that citrate is needed for proliferation. Uh, thank you for your question, uh, it's important, but yeah, th I don't have a uh, uh, definite answer to your question, but yeah, uh, in the uh, uh fatty acid synthesis pathway is uh, inhibited, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it is, uh, good for uh, uh, oxidative phosphorylation uh, via uh, pirate oxidation. Yet, uh, and uh, fast inhibition uh, did not affect the carmicite, uh, but yeah, uh, I don't have. Have you, have you measured uh, OCAR in your, uh, uh, in, in your um, uh, uh, iPS cells, in human iPS cells, to see if OCAR is changed by inhibiting F FASN? Have you looked at OCAR? Because that's another way of looking at the TCA cycle. Uh, no, I haven't checked. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Okay. No questions? So thank you very much for uh, Dr. Toyama. Uh, I'd like to close this lunch on seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you.